Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. It's an absolutely glorious winter's day out today on the motorbike. Far too good not to be out on the bike. Nothing in particular to talk to you about today, just a bit of random vloggage. So uh, if you want to chat while we have a ride, stick around and stay tuned. So here I am on this very chilly day, just coming to Prince's Risborough, uh, which is in South Buckinghamshire. It's home to the uh, Cothill Climb, if you've ever heard of that. It's a great event that happens in September, where car enthusiasts, mostly old vehicles, and bikes as well actually, bring their machines here to a field just around the corner and drive them up Cop Hill. Cop Hill used to be uh, on the uh, official racing circuit, the equivalent in the 1920s of the Formula One uh, racing circuit. People used to do that hill climb. Well, they've sort of uh, reinvented it a few years ago and it's now a great event in September. So that's what uh, I know Prince's Risborough for. Recommend that uh, event to you this year if you've never been. I didn't come out on the bike today just to uh, have a look at Prince's Risborough. <laughs> I came out because it is such a beautiful day. Look at it out here. It is, however, January and it's only about two degrees, so it's absolutely freezing. I had to get the old heaty grips, uh, not heaty grips, heaty gloves on, uh, keeping my hands lovely and toasty. I'm completely trussed up like a kipper. Is that what gets trussed up? Can't remember. To keep warm on a day like this. This sort of riding is not for the faint hearted, I tell you, it's pretty chilly out here. But I had to come out because it's the last day that I've got this bike. This is the absolutely epic Aprilia Tuono that I'm on, the uh, V4 1100 factory variant that uh, I've been very lucky to be riding the last couple of weeks. I was super lucky in fact because uh, Wheels Motorcycles up in Peterborough actually shipped the bike down to me to have a go. So uh, there's loads more coming up on the channel about this bike. I'm recording this and publishing this probably a little bit out of order but uh, don't worry my proper review of the bike will be coming up together with lots of videos on the bike and eventually you'll see my uh, in-depth review where I take you through all the pros and cons. So this video isn't about this bike, I just want to let you know the machine that I'm riding because clearly it's not one of my bikes. Uh, and that's really why I'm out today. Just want to have a last go on this epic bike. It's incredible today, it's about uh, one o'clock I'm recording this, the sun is at the peak in the sky that it is this time of year, which isn't very high. The reason why I waited to come out wasn't so much for it to warm up, because it's not going to warm up today, the top temperature today is two degrees, or forecast to be. But it's more because I want to make sure that the ice had melted on the major roads, which is why I'm sticking on the major roads for this ride, because uh, this morning it actually was snowing quite heavily and it did settle a little bit on the field so I'm just waiting for that to melt away. I went for a run earlier, would you believe that? Me going for a run. <laughs> and it was pretty slippery on the paths. But uh, I really didn't want to go out on a bike where in the dark patches it can still have ice on the roads and risk dropping this puppy. Thousand pound excess if I drop it and break it. I don't want to be going there. But these main roads that have been well sorted, as you can see, it's dry as you like on this road now. And with the sun beating on it, properly free of ice, I hope. I'm curious to see how this uh, GoPro 7 is coping with uh, taking the pictures of my face. If you've seen pictures of my face, that means it's coping okay. If you've not seen any pictures of my face, <laughs> that is because I've attempted to sucker the uh, GoPro right slap bang on the very expensive TFT screen. So I'm going to be very careful when I take it off and give it a little clean before I give this bike back so there's no big sucker marks on it. But the TFT appears to be mounted on a sort of a rubber mount so the uh, GoPro is wiggling around like you wouldn't believe. It's going to be a top test of its image stabilisation. Which I've been very, very impressed with on the camera and everybody I speak to have tried the GoPro 7 say the same thing. It really is excellent, the image stabilisation on it. It's just such a shame that GoPro have chosen to not put a proper mic socket on the camera native. You have to, it's a little USB um, type socket thing. And then you have to use an adapter in order to plug a microphone in. It makes it completely useless for vlogging if you're a vlogger in this country where the camera's likely to be mounted on the right hand side of, the, of your helmet, which means the adapter pokes out on the left 
which means it hasn't, you haven't got room at the side of your helmet to get the adapter and everything. So if you're a UK vlogger, another motorcyclist, a loser, then you're likely to uh, stick with one of the previous generation GoPros. I've not found anything better than the GoPro 4, which is what I'm using here. It still has an adapter, annoyingly, for the mic, but it's not too bulky. It's just a small inline thing. The original GoPro, of course, you just plug the bike straight in, even better. I personally would uh, gladly take a slightly bigger camera housing in order to just be able to plug a mic in. So if anyone from GoPro is watching, please do that for the GoPro 8. Because I'd love to be able to use that sort of image stabilisation on my helmet. It just makes for a much better, better bit of vlogage. Whereas this Hero 4, as you'll be viewing from, there's a bit of shaking around that happens as I move my head, obviously. And it's just not quite so nice to watch. That's not the only problem with the camera, there are others too, but anyway, let's not go on about that. Today's a great test of these gloves. These are the Kais heated gloves. I'm running them off of a battery in my pocket. I've got a review coming up with these gloves soon. If you're interested in heated gear, stick around for that review. They're absolutely brilliant, these gloves. They're the first heated gloves I've had that are kind of dual fuel, if you like. You can, hit, you can use them either plugged into your battery on your bike or using a number of batteries, a high capacity or a low capacity one that you stick in your pocket. And if you're on a bike that doesn't have heated grips like this, then on a day like today where, as I say, it's not above two degrees centigrade, just keep your hands nice and toasty. And these particular Kais ones as well, these knuckle uh, guards on here, they're actually CE approved. First gloves, I think, or first heated gloves that have CE approved knuckle guards. So they're good at protection as well as keeping you warm. Oh, the scourge of riding the southeast, eh? Stuck behind a car as ever. Right, I'm going to get past this car, then I'm going to enjoy this bike. What it's made for, nothing behind me. Oh, it's a brute, this bike. Absolutely beautiful. It's not really the sort of bike that you could ride properly and vlog on though, so uh, I'm going to sign off. Just a quick, uh, quick little video today. Just to show you that it is possible to ride at these sort of temperatures. And say cheerio to the awesome Tuono that I've really enjoyed. Okay, catch up with you again soon. Till next time, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.